Hi everybody. Okay, so now we have an address form. The next thing to do is to let the user be able to input in this form, which they can do right now, and actually have it get sent to the server. That's part of a front-end developer's task. In JavaScript, they'll do that. Now, you could have someone who's designing and just doing HTML, and then maybe um, a JavaScript developer, if there is such a thing, would uh, add the script. But if you're a front-end developer, you should be able to do the HTML part and the JavaScript part. So this is going to be the JavaScript part that sends these values um, to the server. Now, back in the old days, you used to be able to fill these things in and hit save, and it would uh, post to the server or whatever method you put in the form to send it there. Uh, we don't really do that anymore because uh, that used to be like um, multiple pages. So it would post and it would return a different page. Now it's more interactive and more API driven. Uh, so it's more a request response as in data moving back and forth, whereas in the UI pretty much is the UI, the user interface at the front end, and the back end is the back end, and there's data that transfers between the two of them. Uh, that's really how it's done these days. So JavaScript is the thing that helps make that happen. Now, I have built um, the form and done the JavaScript part in one of the other courses, but I don't do it very often. Um, and I never remember how it goes. So I do this every time. So if, if you're a beginner and you think you always have to look stuff up, well, someone who's been doing it for a really long time has to do it too. And I do these forms and the JavaScript stuff a lot, um, but I don't do it every single day. So you're gonna see me um, fumble along and we're gonna do it together. And you'll see the pages that I look up and how I find things, because I don't remember. I know it's called URL fetch is what I'm using. And that's what we're going to look up. So let's get to um, some uh, code first. And so we're going to get back into our, um, our page. And so what we have here is a pretty bare bones page. Um, it's just got the HTML in it. So now we're going to add some JavaScript to it. We've got JavaScript added here <coughs> down below, but that's for Bootstrap and that's for the layout. So we want to go ahead and add some script now to the page that's going to do um, the things that we needed to do with posting this. So First thing I'm going to do is just see if this is even working. So I'm going to console log like that and just say hello. And then when I actually run this in the browser, I should see hello in a console window. So if I right click, here, let me right click higher so you can see that menu. If I right click, you'll see an inspect uh, menu option down here. Or I could hit, uh, I think it's F12. But if I hit inspect, you'll see this little um, debugger come up. And we can close this messages thing, what's new. And then you could actually see the structure of our HTML. So this is an inspector, so we could see things in here. Um, we're not actually in here to do that right now. We will do this another time uh, when we show you how to actually modify the layouts and how to um, figure out how things should go when you're trying to style them. What we're trying to do right now is just get the a script going. So what we should have, if I hit escape, I'll get a console window. And if I see this console, I should say hello in here if I refresh this page. And there's the hello. So we know that our script is working, and I could actually see that right here. And just to show you one of the things that we'll probably be doing in here, let me make some space. If I open up this page and I put a breakpoint right where this console log statement is by clicking on to the left of the number, there's a breakpoint. If I refresh this page, now the browser is running code in here, and it's actually paused right now waiting for me to do something with it. So that's one of the things we'll probably exercise here. And then I could just let it go through and then we'll see hello world here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is add some script to post this to the server. Now, let's do what it does by default first and see what it does. So we know what it does when we put get in here. We tried this before, we submitted the button and it ended up putting a get request response into our uh, browser URL. Let's just go ahead and show that again really quick. Here's what it did. So if I put something in here, put Bob, and let's call it Roberts for the last name. And if I hit save on this, you can see here that first name came out Bob, last name came out Roberts, and street address and uh, everything else is blank. And it posted to this page. So what we want to do, and you could actually see that in here too, if we click on the network tab and we do this again, it's not going to the network, it's just doing the get request straight up to this page, uh, which is, um, it should be going, oh, because we have the, this fetch thing turned on this to all. All right, and refresh. All right, so now index is actually doing a get request, which we can see 
here on the URL, which we can't really see that much. So what it's doing here is going across and uh, asking for the page. Usually it shows what the method is. Um, I guess it's just assume that it's a get here because I don't see it actually doing it. Saying get, let's see. It usually says get. Well, it says it in the network part of it. So if we close this, we'll see that it's doing the method somewhere. Document. Ah, usually it shows the method. Maybe it'll show it if we change it. So let's go ahead and go into our page. And so what we want to do is now change this to post. Usually it's typed in uppercase. So if we change this to post, we're going to see something different. Instead of this being up here, we're going to see nothing up here after we hit that save button. So let's go ahead and put Bob in here again. And why isn't that sizing? Okay, that should actually be sizing for us. So something is just not connected here, right? Okay, that's working. I'm too far off the page. All right, let's inspect this again. I'll go higher so you can see the menu. Okay, that's supposed to push the page over, but it's not really pushing. That's because that's saying 720p. Let's make it be responsive. Okay, that's a phone. Why isn't it actually doing what I expect it to do? So it's setting to 720p. Oh, that's because this is on. Okay, now it'll flow, right? So I must have clicked this button inadvertently. So if that happens to you, this is actually setting the size to what's on this uh, pull down menu, so it's going to do that. And so, if that happens to you, make sure you undo that thing. And that way, it'll actually do what it's supposed to do act like it's a browser. And this is the debug window over here. Okay, so let's put some values in here. And if we hit the save button now, what we were seeing was values coming up here. And let's click on our network tab. What we're going to see now is something different. Uh, actually, we didn't. Maybe we need to refresh. So, let's do that again. So, let's Get rid of these, and let's refresh that page. And now let's go ahead and try this again. So if I save, it didn't put anything up here, but you notice that the page did do something, and then it um, went to nowhere. But it you can see here that the data is Bob Roberts is what got sent. And let's look at the network tab here if I close this X and we're still not seeing it do anything because maybe it didn't although I thought it would be posting to the server but it won't until we do this this action this action is telling it to do nothing which means don't go to the server just stay here and so let's go ahead and give it some place now this is just gonna be a dummy place to go there isn't anything on the server yet and let's just call it address um, book like that all right, so now if we refresh the page and if we post this, and I hit save, we're going to see something entirely different, I hope. Now we have something different. See so here, you can see this was actually going somewhere. Why it's not showing me what the actual post method is, is I'm not sure right now because it's supposed to be telling me that this was a post. It's telling me the requested URL is going to a file because we're not on a server. That's why we're running it as a file. So I'm going to have to show you how to run this as a server. What is the easiest way to do that? Because right now we're working it as a file and there's no server to post to. So it's not actually posting to a server. It's just posting locally uh, to itself. And so now it went to the address book, something on file, which there isn't one. Um, easiest thing to do. Let's do this. We're going to, to install Node.js because I think that's the easiest thing to do right now. Uh, typically, we like a Java server, and that might be the easiest thing to do, but let's uh, try this right now. Let's do Node.js. I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to type Mac install and download Node.js. We've got installer, so let's just do Mac installer, and it's downloading here. Now, I already have it installed, but I haven't updated it in a while, so this is probably not a bad thing to do. And we'll see what happens to the installer when it installs it. And the reason we're doing this is just so we can get a server. 
we're not going to actually learn Node.js in this course. We're going to try and stick to the front end. I should be going with Java because that's what our back end courses are, are, and that's what our full stack courses are. And I actually think it's easier than Node. Um, but this is actually a popular choice. And I use this, in fact, for my um, front end server needs sometimes, if, unless I'm not, unless I'm doing something with Java on the back end. Okay, so package has been installed. Node.js went here, here, and here, and it's been added to my path. So I don't need the installer anymore. Now I'm going to open up a terminal window. And this is a terminal window on Mac. Yours will look different on Linux or Windows. All right, so I should be able to do node dash dash version. And that's the version I installed. So now I've got node. So now npm is the package manager for node. And I want to install http dash server. And so that's the thing I don't like about Node sometimes. It has, um, I run into these errors a lot. And that's not to mean that it, there's anything bad with it, but sometimes it gives me some grief. Let's see, created a lock file, something, something. You should commit this file. No such file or directory. Okay, fine. Why are you complaining? Did it, now I already have it installed. Okay, here it is, HTT plus server. So did it actually do it? These are just warnings. So everything should be fine, is my guess. Okay, HTTP-server, and let's give it a port number. Uh, I'm going to run this on 5555, five, 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 four fives. And if I do that, now I've got uh, a server running on localhost, which is this 127 address. So now I should be able to go in there and um, run a server. But question is, where is this page actually saved? If can I reveal it on disk somehow? Find all references, command palette. How about this explorer? Okay, well, that's interesting. Let's save it then. I'm going to my file menu and I'm going to hit save. That's just saving. I'm going to hit file save as and that might tell me where it is. It's telling me it's in my root folder on full stack developer. Let's see if I open this. Yep, I'm in the root folder. So I am also in the root folder here, I believe. So if I control C this and I type T PWD on uh, Windows or not Windows, Mac or Linux will tell me the current folder, which is where I am. Um, it might work the same on Windows. I'm not sure. I think you can just do DIR and it'll show you where you are. DIR is not found on, on the Mac. Okay, so I have index. So if I type ls and index.html here. No, I do have an index page. So if I just do that HTTP dash server thing again. And dash p for port. And if I run it, I should be able to go to port 5555. So HTTP localhost and four fives. I've got the, the index page and some Dropbox thing. I don't know what that is. Index of root is what that's saying. So index.html. I don't think that's actually finding things where I want it to because it should have actually found index.html there. It's not in the, even in the box where I think it should be. It's the index of slash that so actually went to the home full to the home home folder what folder is this I thought we already did this let's do this let's see we've got an index page right there that should actually be working so let's try this again okay one more time So if it's giving me index of slash, it should be showing me what this folder is, but it's actually not doing that. I don't know what it's doing. So I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to make a, a directory and I'm going to call it web pages. And then I'm going to move my index file into web pages. Then I'm going to go into web pages and I've got the index page there. Let's run HTTP dash server here.
all right, what's going to give me index of now? Now it found the index page. So it was confused in that home folder. So I created a subfolder for it. And on uh, Windows, you could just go into File Explorer and uh, right click. You don't have to go into a terminal window, but just to run the, the server. That's the easiest server I could think of to, to bring up. So anyway, here's our form. And so now, do the menu up here so you can see it. Now, if I inspect this, we should see differences in how this thing behaves. All right, so there's our hello for the debug. Let's go ahead and put in Bob and Roberts and let's save. And now we should see something different. And it looks very similar until we click on this maybe. And now we see method post and then we see the server URL. So now it's working the way it should because we're now actually connected to a server. So it's now it's trying to post um, to this address, address book, which we don't have and we know that. We didn't do any server work here. All right, so let's go ahead and change this back to a get method just because I want to see what it does. And you should experiment too. All right, not address book. Okay, and then we're just going to post this again or not post it, we're going to hit save and see what it actually does. All right, so now what did it do? It went to do the post again. So let's refresh this page. And maybe I didn't save it. All right, let's try this again. Experimenting. It's doing a post and maybe I didn't save it. I did save it. So is post should be what's happening here. So if we inspect that form, let's go back to this. If we inspect this form and look at the method, it says post. That's interesting. So we are editing the wrong file here because we moved this file into the subfolder. So this, when we actually changed this to get, we're changing the wrong file. So this could happen to you too. So let's go ahead and open the file. Let's open that folder. So we were in the root folder and then we created something called web pages. So let's open this. Yes, I trust the authors. There's the index page, get rid of this welcome, get rid of all this stuff and back to index. Okay, so now we've got this post is still here. Now we're gonna change it to get and now it's gonna work. All right, that could happen to you. So um, remember that. All right, so let's try this again and save. All right, now it's doing that again, where it's putting the values up here, but we'll see a difference in the network tab where it went here, and now it's actually going to the server. So it's actually doing a get to the server. So 404 means not page not found. So it's actually posting these values to the server like it did in the old days. All right, back to post, because that's what we're gonna do. And then we're gonna use some JavaScript after this. So now we're posting to the address book page. Let's go ahead and put this back. There we are, and we're gonna post and make sure it's posting again. And what we get is a post method. All right, so post, it's sending to our server, and what's it sending to our server? It's sending these values right here as form data, so that's its default behavior. What we're gonna do is something called uh, JSON. So what JSON is is JavaScript object notation, and it's just a, a human-readable form of sending HTML. So if we look, actually look at this, it by default sends it as um, form, uh, application form, I think it's form encoded URL. Um, and that's, uh, so URL encoding is what is sending it as to the server. What we want it to do is send as JSON. So what we're gonna do is use JavaScript to turn our form into JSON. And so that's what we're gonna learn here. And that's really the whole point of the lesson. It took us a long time to get here. All right, so we've got this here, right? And so, now what we want to do is we want to stop the form from submitting itself the way it's doing it right now. So we want to capture um, that form element, and then we want to um, post its values with uh, JavaScript instead of having it do what it's doing naturally and by default. So what do we do to do that? So the first thing is we want to look for, and we should use this tab because we don't need it like that anymore. I want to do get element by um, ID sounds good. We'll give that form an ID and just should put uh, JavaScript here. And it, would, it was already finding it there. So MDN is the place we like to go. So get element by ID 
and then you can see here's the description and that's what we want we want document get element by id whatever our id is so we're going to go in here and see if we have an id on our form and we do not so let's put one right here and we can call it form and we could get element by tag but we could have several forms in here so we just want to give this one an id and this one will just be form if we had another form we'd call it something else because you want these to be unique by id so now we've got get document dot get element by id so let's do this in this script tag so we're going to do document dot get element and you can see that the um, um, editor is helping here sometimes it gets in the way though and right here we want to put form and let's set it equal to now there's different ways to do variables right you can do the old school was variable and we could say element actually it's a form so let's call it what it is and that would give us uh, a variable now we have what since es5 or es6 uh, ECMAScript 5 or version 5 or version 6 we have now variables we can do let which is we're going to let this variable be equal to this and means we're going to change it we're, we're allowed to change the value later if the value is not going to change you want to use const so it means it's a constant as soon as it's set you don't change it anymore and there's no reason for this form variable to change so we're going to call it const and right now i want to see that we actually get something so we use the console a lot or at least i do and so i want to see what's working here so if we refresh this page not that page this page and let's get rid of this post we've got this and now if we post this we should see something come out here okay what we're getting is an error and the reason we're getting that error and not seeing something out here is because it's working let's see this page isn't working is what it said probably because of a 405 method not allowed on the post we don't have a server that's even lis looking listening for this so we don't have a server uh, a method allowed here so what I'm going to do now is set a breakpoint. Okay, so we've got that. And I put HTML. By default, Node will pick up that it's index HTML, but I'm just going to put that there for now because you can do both. Um, and we're going to go into sources and we're going to open that up. And that this index thing isn't really doing anything. I could do slash and it'd be the same exact thing. Um, so I'm going to put a breakpoint here so that we can see what's going on because the form is posting and it's giving us a new page. And it's saying the page isn't working. And this is getting to be a pretty funny lesson. Okay, so let's do Bob, let's do Roberts, and hit save. Oh, JavaScript. Here's why it's doing that. Okay, so what we did here, and this is good because this is a learning thing. So we've got a form. This is actually running, not when we're clicking the save button, but it's running when it hits here. So when it comes down, it's evaluating from top down. It hits this script, it loads this file from a server, bootstrap. It hits this script tag, then it starts executing this code. So this had nothing to do with the button yet because we didn't tell it to do anything with the button yet. So what you'll see here is when we come back here and hit this page, there is our form right there. So, and there's our input values. There's first name, last name, street address. So that's great. And you can see here that the browser's helping show us what these are, but that's not what we want. And we don't want this to execute then. We want it to execute when we want to see it. So getting this form element is great, but we need to actually do something with it before we can use it. Because we don't want to do it at the beginning. We need to do it when somebody clicks the button. All right, so on this form, we want to do an um, a listener of some form and I don't know how to add that I could take a guess but I'd rather use uh, MDN for this so I'm going to type MDN form uh, submit listener like that and then you can see I've been here before and so how did listen to the submit event so what we're doing here is we're teaching you how to find the answers yourself I could give you the answers but I'm sh showing how I look up the answers because I don't remember. So 
hopefully by you seeing me looking up the answers, you'll learn that you can find the answers for yourself because it's all out there. Uh, you just have to know how to look for it. All right, so here's a form, simple form button. And then here's a submit. Here's an add event listener is what we're looking for. Submit is the thing, uh, that event that we're listening for. And then this is a function, submit, log submit, which is what we want to see here. I'm going to show you a different way to do this. I really just wanted to know what that was called and what the syntax was here, what arguments need to be sent. So with form, I'm going to do add event listener. So form dot add event listener. And then I am going to want to listen to the submit but, um, event, which when the form submitted, it's going to come here. And then I'm just going to add my function right here. I'm going to put EV in there. And then curly brackets starts a code block. So I've got a parenthesis here. And then I've got the thing we're listening for, which is the submit action is what we're listening for. And this is starting a function. These are the arguments. This IntelliSense thing, or these tool tips are getting in the way sometimes. This is a variable that's going to be an event that's passed into this function. And then we close the function here like this. And now we could put that console log thing in here. And instead of console logging out the form, which we already saw, let's console log out the event. All right, so now if that submit button's clicked, we're going to see this console event. Now I know we're not going to see it right now because what's going to happen when we refresh is now we didn't get that code because it didn't execute until we clicked the button. So let's put Bob and let's put Robert and let's save. And you saw it flash here really quick. Maybe you didn't, but it flashed really quick and then it went to its default action. So what's happening is the form is doing what it does. We're getting our submit event, but it, then the form's taking over and doing what it normally does, which we want to kind of stop. All right, so let's put a breakpoint there just to prove that out and so that you know how to do this too. So back to the index page, and we're going to put a values in, and then in hitting, instead of hitting save right now, what I'm going to do first is go to sources, index, and then right where that code is, with this open now, I'm going to go right here so we can see what happens. So we hit save. We're in this console log um, line, and we're in the submit form submit event. And if we step over, which is this little button right here, so stepping over the log, it stepped over, it logged out, and then it went here. So we didn't get to see what actually happened. So let's do this. Let's put another console log so we have a line to go to. Let's make it say hello again. We just want some, some place to stop so that when we step from this line, it'll step to that line so we can see what's going on here. And this is one way to debug a page. All right, so let's do this. And we'll hit save. Now we're on this breakpoint. We're going to step over. And the form submitted again. So we've got this thing actually did log out. I don't know what it actually logged out. That doesn't look like what we wanted. Okay, let's try that again. Why is it actually continuing on? It should be coming down into this next line before it actually does its thing. But I think what's happening is the form is submitting even while this is happening. So it must be happening at the same time, which I didn't think it would do, but that is apparently what's going on. So, well, actually it would be doing it right now if it was doing that. So we've got this and we could easily just do this and print out event right here and we see that it's a submit event and all the attributes for it but we want that console log so if we step once it's actually stepping out of that so that's kind of weird all right so let's just try and get it to stop that so form submit prevent and prevent default the google's helped me but let's just say we only know prevent because we want to stop it from doing it so how do you sub prevent a form from being submitted let's do mdn here and so a submit event. And in the example, it must have had something here. Did they explain anything about prevent default in here? Let's look for the word prevent. Uh, something prevents form submission. So trying to submit a form that does not pass validation uh, triggers an invalid event. In this case, the validation prevents the form submission from happening. 
thus there is no submit event. So that's when we're using validation. Here's another prevent and another prevent. So here's uh, prevent default in JavaScript. They don't explain it here, which is very interesting, but we can use it. So prevent default is what we want. So ev, let's do it at the top here, ev.preventDefault, and it's a function. All right, so now if we run this, see if it works. Okay, so we're on the second line, and we should be able to step over this, and if it doesn't work now, that's really confusing to me. Okay, it should have stopped on this very next line. Why it's not doing that, I don't know. And this is getting pretty weird. Let's put another breakpoint there. That's why. All right, let's refresh. Although step over should have gone to the next line, so I actually don't get it. Okay, I think the browser's goofing uh, that up because it's usually step, step, step. I didn't tell it to step out, so that's kind of weird. All right, so now it's on that next line, and now we get our form submit action. And now if we run, the form is not actually doing its submit thing because we have prevent default here uh, stopping it. I'm really confused as to why this browser is acting this way too because it should not be doing that. If I have a breakpoint and I click here, it should actually not continue on, it should go to the very next line. Like, that's not doing. So that's really weird. Okay, uh, maybe it'll do that in another lesson. Uh, okay, so we've got that going. We're form submitting. So now we want to do something else here. We've got the event, and we've got the form. So now that we want to get some values. So let's do uh, form dot how do you get the uh, value from a form so let's do this let's do mdn form get form values so then if we go down here to this page uh, we've got some inputs we've got inputs username so they're actually doing get element by d by form elements that's handy and then inputs username Okay, I haven't done it this way before. That's kind of clever. So let's go ahead and do that. So get document by element ID, which we do. We have the form array, so we could just be able to call elements here. I haven't done this before, so that'll be interesting. So let's do, we're, this isn't gonna change, so we'll do const element uh, inputs. And let's console log those out. I have not done this before. Okay, so now if we run this, and we run, is it gonna step right now? Okay, see that how it went to one line? That's great, and see how this goes to this? Now it's doing it, it goes to that line. And then if we step it here, uh, it should go to the next line, but let's go ahead and print out elements here. Oh wait, what do we call it? Inputs. Let's print out inputs here. And we've got um, uh, HTML forms controls collection. Very interesting, I haven't done this before. So let's see how this works. So we step and we get that printed out. And so that seems to be working. All right, so then it said we can get things by the name in this Mozilla document. Where'd that go? Over here. So we should be able to do inputs and then ask for it by uh, whatever the name thing is because they are doing name equals that. And it's a good thing we put those names on ours so we can ask for it by first name. So let's just do that for the first one and make sure it's working. So we can do inputs, square brackets, first name. And this should give, you the, give us something to do with first name. So let's see what that does. So refresh the page and let's save. And we'll just run this through. This is that run button. And it gave us the actual element here. So now we should be able to do something with that value. So let's go ahead and see what MDN says about what to do next. We'll get input by name. And so we could see here, this is actually looping through it, but 
we can see that dot value is actually what, how we're going to pull that. The documentation here is usually very good, um, and it's helpful. But you do have to do some uh, read it through and kind of infer by looking at the examples. So let's go and do this dot value like so, and then we'll run that page again. And if we save and run it through, Bob. So we got the value there. So that's great. All right, so now let's go ahead and do the rest of those. So we've got inputs. Let's go ahead and save our values. All right, so now I'm going to show you um, the JavaScript object notation. So we're going to go ahead and start a constant here, and we're going to call it values. And we're going to start an object with those curly brackets, and the um, editor is going to help me with the end curly bracket. So now we're in an object. All right, so what I want to do is type in the attributes of this. So the first thing we're going to do is first name and colon, because this is now a field attribute of this object called values for us. And we're going to get the uh, form, oh, we call them inputs. We're going to get inputs, uh, first name. I like to use single quotes in here for that. You see, I, I like to use double quotes when it's an actual string that we're doing something with. But when it's, when it's something we're actually not concatenating together, I like to use these um, values here. Are these single quotes here? So first name dot value. All right, so that's going to give us. We don't put a, um, a semicolon at the end of this. So let's go ahead and console log uh, values, and let's see what that looks like now. And once we figure out the first one, the others will just will be easier, and we'll just do more of the same. All right, so then we're going to run this through. And you can see here now we have an object. And it's got first name is equal to Bob. OK, so now let's go ahead and fill in the rest. So we've got first name, and then we put a comma here for the next one. And that's going to be last name and last name. OK, and we're pretty sure that's going to work. But again, let's go ahead and do the second one, the third one. Then you'll be able to see how this is all working. So I refresh the page. And if I save this and run it through, now you see here we've got two. We've got the first name and the last name, and it's actually working. So let's go ahead and finish the rest of them through. So comma, and this one was street address. I should just be able to copy and paste. All right, street address that, and this one was street, oops. This one was street address two. Here, let's make this so we can see there. And this one was city. And if we don't know what they are, we can scroll up. So there it is, city. So we had street address two, here city. And remember, it's name. Uh, state, zip code is what's next. So we'll do, if we did city, let's do state. And zip code is last. Okay, I like to remove the commas from the end here because if I'm not going to have another line, I just want it to end. Uh, back in the old days, I don't think it does that anymore. Internet Explorer used to not like that comma, and you, you'd get some kind of script error. Uh, so I'm in the habit of removing it. And if you don't need the comma, don't put it. Um, okay, so now we should have a lot of values. So let's refresh the page again, and we'll fill this out a little bit more. And let's give them an address. Uh, how about any street? Address two, just for uh, to see it fill in. Sweet one, two, three. Uh, any town and zip or state. Uh, any state. 
Is there any such an eight? No, there isn't. Let's do Alaska or AK. Is that Alaska? I think it's Alaska. And I don't know what the zip code in Alaska is. We're not validating, so we can go ahead and do that. So if we save now and run it through, you can see here we've got all the values. So that's great. So that's working. So now we've got a Java object of the form values. And that's how it works. The code's not very big, so let's just go ahead and do a review. First thing we're doing is getting the form when the page loads via its ID. And we gave it an ID called form. We added an event listener to it for its submit event. So when someone pushes the submit button, we want it to call our function here with the event, which gives us the uh, um, attributes of this event. Uh, and then we're going to prevent it from doing its default action because the form is going to try and do it, a post by itself, which is going to try and render a whole, bring back a whole new page. That's not what we want. We want to try and make a single page application because that's what we do these days. Uh, and then we're getting the form elements as inputs, and this gets them by name. And then we're starting a JavaScript object called values. We're starting it with the curly bracket, and then we're filling in the attributes. Attribute colon value, and that's how that works. So inputs is an array of names. And so here's the name of our thing. So first name matches the name of the input element right here. And then last name and street address. And you'll see that is last name, then street address, street address two, city, state, zip. And then we've got an object that's printing out here. So now we've got the form. So the next thing is to send it to the server. So back to figuring out how to do this, because uh, I don't remember, but I do remember it's called URL fetch. What we could do is you might not know it's called URL fetch, and we're trying to teach you how to find the answers for yourself. So this is going to be an HTML form, and we want to do submit JavaScript to server because we don't know. And let's do MDN to try and limit it to those uh, responses and maybe it will give us something. So this one says sending form data to the server. Uh, that's doing learn sending form data. Does it tell us anything here? I haven't seen this page before. So this is telling us the default action. It's probably a good valuable page to read through uh, if you're learning because uh, it's explaining all these things. The get method, it's kind of what we lightly touched on, but this is going into more detail. Post method, which is, we tried out. Uh, and then it's telling you the requests are actually going through the debugger as well and showing you how this all works. This is a very excellent page to go through. Um, but this isn't really what we're looking for. This is, But this is an awesome page telling us how to actually do all this with a regular form. Lots of information here. That's great. Okay, so now we don't want that one. So I know it's called URL fetch, but again, you still don't know that. So how do we get to something submit with JavaScript form post JavaScript. Let's try that. OK, so Stack Overflow is another excellent page. Post URL. Let's say this. We're actually just trying to figure out right now. We don't know what to search for. So we're trying to figure out what words should we search for to actually find our answer? Um, and that's one of the tricks is trying to find out how to uh, find out what it is you're searching for if you don't know. And that's where a lot of beginners get stuck, not knowing what to, what to search for. Um, and this is using jQuery. Anytime you see this dollar sign here, it's using some form of JavaScript uh, library, which is probably jQuery. All right, so this isn't what we want. So I'm going to give you a hint because I don't know that we're finding it very easily here because it's um, pulling up the old school form stuff. So, oh wait, here we go. Down here, so this Ajax right here. Ajax is what it's called. And I don't know what request rec bin is. It's a request bin probably is what it's called. Um, but we do get a keyword Ajax here. So if we put the word Ajax in here now, we get something different. And so here's a form, and here's some code using jQuery. And then here's a quick description of Ajax. So someone's giving an answer. So the way this works is there's a question, and then down below there's answers. 
And so they're again using jQuery, you can tell by the dollar sign or some form of it. So let's go ahead and change our search to add MDN to it. And let's see what MDN says. Sending forms through JavaScript. I think we already went to that one. How about Ajax Developer's Guide? And so they're giving us um, a history of how to send and what Ajax is and how it sends. And then they're giving us different things. So using the XHTTP request API, that's one way to do it. The fetch API, and that's the newer one. That's the one we're going to use. Um, and then they've got a couple other ways to do it. Again, excellent documentation. And so they're giving us links to these sub pages. So let's use the fetch API because that's what we use these days. So the fetch API is a way of sending the post request that we saw the form doing by default, but now we're using JavaScript. And so differences between jQuery and using uh, fetch. All right, so uh, fetch methods. So we actually need some documentation. So that's just telling us lightly what fetch is. So when you're first starting out, you're going to have to kind of fumble around. Luckily, right now, we're doing it together. Um, so how about using fetch over here on the left? So using fetch, they should have examples at some point. So here's one that's doing a get. So fetch, not uh, meth mentioning a method, is just a de by default a get. So here's a response, and here's that. So here's one that's actually doing a post, and this one looks kind of complicated. So we've got an async method going on here. Um, and then here's waiting for the response. Let's see if we've got any simpler examples. That's a get. There's another get. How about uploading JSON data? That looks promising because we've got data. Ours is called, um, what do we call it, values? We could change it to data just to match. But you can see here, this is familiar, right? Here's the attribute, here's the colon, and here's the value. OK, so uploading a file, uploading multiple files. So if you're really interested in this, you'll want to go through this page a little bit more. I'm trying to stick to learning only what we need to learn, so that way we don't get inundated with all this information that we don't need right now, because uh, that just clouds what you're learning. You really want to focus on what you're trying to learn. So let's stay on the task. And we're trying to just figure out how to fetch post um, something. And so I'm not actually seeing a good, and now we're at the end of the documentation. As soon as you see the specifications are not there. So we picked up the word fetch, and we picked up the word fetch API. And we know that we want to post data to the form. So now let's go ahead and do our search again. So let's use those words. So we're going to say fetch API JavaScript because these are our words. And we're going to say data and MDN to get us on, keep us on MDN network. So fetch API, we already clicked on this one. You can tell by the color or either that or I've clicked on it before, which is very possible. So this, this page looks familiar. That's the one we just went to. Um, using fetch, that's the one we just went to. How about this page? So fetch resource in it. Don't know how this works. Don't know if I've seen this page before. Looking for examples. All right, this one's doing a fetch. Oh, I know what we want to do. We want to add the word uh, post to our search. So let's do that. So we want to post data. That should help limit it, I hope. So you won't have this much trouble once you first start, because once you do this once, you already know what the keywords are. Um, I think we went to this page already. Let's see, post. All right, so we've got this more complicated example, which I don't want to use uh, because it's more complicated. Because this one's actually creating a function and then calling it. I just want to see the fetch API with a post. OK, there was actually one on the page. And that's the one we actually talked about. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's just copy it. You should actually type it, though. But in the interest of time, let's do this. OK, so let's format it a little bit. It pasted in funny. 
So I'm just holding down shift and moving the cursor to the beginning. Shift arrow down is highlighting everything and then tab, tab. That's in line. This one got funky tabbed. All right, and then so the paste actually did something to our uh, indentation. We want to indent things so we can read them just like we do with HTML. We want to do the th same thing with JavaScript. So this should be indented inside of the curly brackets. And then that should be, which it already is. This stays on that same level. This should go back here. Because notice it lines up with this one, right? So this stuff's inside. And then this one technically should be here. And there. And that lines up. You see how the editor is showing these squares where they line up? So that should be back there. This one should be here. Okay, that's better better indented so we can read it. Okay, so where do we want this to go? We don't actually have a server yet, so we could send it anywhere. But we're going to send it to localhost. So localhost is your local machine. We have it running at 555. And let's call it address. What did we call it before? Was it address book? I don't remember. But let's say it's going to post to address book. And there we have a comment here. We don't need that. So that's post. Put is for updating. Post is for creating. We're going to create this one first. We're going to stringify data. Now our data is actually called values. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. Notice that the format's the same. We just have more. I'm triple clicking to highlight one row, but it's not working. There. OK, and then let's change this word to data. OK, so now we're going to stringify the data. And then it's going to give us a response, which we don't have a server, so we're going to get an error. And then if we actually did get something back, we would uh, show our data. So we're almost to the end of this lesson. And we're running almost into an hour, probably because of all the fumbling at first. OK, so we've got this page. Let's go ahead and refresh the page and see how this works. OK, and all the values remembered, so that's great. We're going to go ahead and post this. And let's step through it. So we've got prevent default. We've got inputs. We've got data that got filled in. And we could hover over it, and we can see that our data is, in fact, filled in. Now we're going to step over. And we want to step, well, once we step on this one, it's just going to go ahead and crash when it tries to submit. So we're going to get an error. We should be in here. So let's put a breakpoint there uh, to see if we do get that error. And we do. So we've, we're getting an error, which makes sense, because we don't have a server. Method not allowed. And that's good. Um, so we're at a breakpoint here. Let's go to the network and see what it tried to do. So it's trying to post to the, the um, address book. It's using a post, and it's sending data. And it's in JSON format. So if we view source, we can see what our JSON format looks like. So it's actually posting to our address uh, on the server side. So that is pretty much all that there is to putting a form together, having the values put into a um, JavaScript object notation format. So we created a Java object with the brackets and attributes and values. We got the values from our form uh, using the form elements. We prevented the form from submitting using prevent default. Otherwise, it's going to do its thing, and anything that happens down here isn't going to matter. Uh, and then we're actually using the fetch API to post to our address book. Now, we, di we didn't have to put this HTTP here. We should actually have just done this, because that way it'll post automatically to what our server is, no matter what we're running on, localhost 555. We don't need to know that. We're just posting relatively to the address book. And that's what we should be doing. So we didn't need all that, and we'll prove that in a second. Uh, we're using the method post, similar to our form. We've got headers telling the server that we're sending its content as JSON uh, object notation. We're going to turn our object into a string here. And this stuff will matter when we actually have a server. Right now, we came into this error, and we consoled it out. And let's go ahead and run this page again to finish everything off. And I'm going to refresh the page. We're going to fill in the values again. And now I'm going to save, which will um, post to our server. Now you see address book is just going to the address that we want it to. I'm just going to run that through. 
around the error. And if I run that through, we get the error printed out unexpected and of JSON input because we, it got no JSON input really what happened, there is no server. So that's the error. So we're posting to a server that doesn't exist, but our front end is complete as far as creating an address is concerned. And so that will end this lesson. Um, we were learning how to figure out what it is we needed to search for, learning how to find our own answers. Um, Mozilla Developers Network has really good doc documentation, so I always like to throw that uh, set of letters into the search. So that way it keeps it on the Mozilla Developers Network because they have good documentation. So what we learned here is how to take our form, post it to a server that doesn't exist right now, but it's actually still posting it. We don't have to make any modifications to this now for it to actually get to our server with the information we want it to get to. And we learned how to do all this by not knowing how to do it, by searching using Google uh, or DuckDuckGo, whatever search engine you want to use. And then we put together our JavaScript to send this. And that concludes this lesson, almost an hour. Um, but we did a lot of learning. And mostly what we learned was how to learn. And that's more important because now, you're, now you know how to find the answers yourself, or at least how to figure out how to find the answers for yourself. And that's what's the most important thing. And that ends this lesson. See you in the next lesson.